Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you are doing great. I got a good story for you out of the hedge. I'm gonna link it below. It's about CalPERS. Before I start reading it, I wanna explain, we're gonna talk about CalPERS and CalPERS is an absolutely massive pension fund. As a matter of fact, I believe it's one of the largest or the largest in the country. And it is in trouble. And, and I'm, I'm, I don't say that to like get you to panic. This isn't financial advice, but not a financial advisor. But uh, I'm gonna explain something and I'm gonna show you why CalPERS is in trouble, all right? Now, uh, we went from a, a big transformation about, I wanna say 25 years ago, 20 years ago, from a, a DB to a DC, I'm sorry, a DC. Oh gosh, I always screw this one up. Defined benefits or defined contribution. Defined benefit plan is what we used to have where uh, you would uh, go and work for a company and you would uh, say, okay, what are you going to give me for retirement? They say, if you work here X amount of years, we're going to give you X amount of percent of your pay. It's pretty darn simple, right? And then we tra transitioned over when companies like, whoa, we didn't expect all these baby boomers to start retiring one day. We're going uh, we're gonna to be losing money huge. And so they converted to what's called defined contribution. And you would come in now and go, okay, what am I getting? They say, all right, you're either going to get a little bit of what we used to do, defined benefits, where you work this long, you're going to get this much. So not this much anymore, this much. But we've got this thing over here where, you know, uh, if you put money in yourself, we'll match it um, uh, or you just put money in it and it can grow. But since we're putting it together and paying all the fees or something like that, you know, then you got a little bit over here and you got a little bit over here and it makes a lot, supposedly, right? Uh, some companies uh, just say define contribution as, hey, yeah, um, you put some money in and then we'll match a little bit of it. You could put this much in if you want. We'll match this much. And uh, so my point being is that what's happened over time is companies and governments have learned that they do not have the money to keep up with uh, uh, paying their retirees. All right. Well, now CalPERS is no different. And one thing that CalPERS has done over the years is they have been uh, slowly raising the amount of uh percentage you have to put put in, all right, that you have to pay. At the same time, they've been decreasing benefits, all right? And so uh, that is the sign that the uh, pension fund is in trouble. It means that it can, every time it changes the amount that it wants, it, it makes you put in, and then it also changes the amount that you get later on, right, over time, it means that it is not solvent right? And a lot of people go, no, no, I, I get my pension all the time. Yes, I get, I get it, but it's, it's a fraction of what it used to be. And the thing is, is how they do it is they don't affect the people. Like I'll give you an example. Um, they do these percentages where they come in and they go, Hey, uh, you're uh, 1% at 20 or 2% at 30, or, you know, I'm just throwing out random numbers. What I mean is they go, okay, um, you're making X, a per X amount percent of your pay each year. And then when you add them up over the amount of life that you worked, that's, the percentage of your pay, right? That you'd get. Well, what happens is on a certain day, they say, okay, as of right now, anyone new getting into this pension system is going to pay more and get less back. All right. That's it. And so it doesn't affect everybody from the past. All right. So if you're getting a pension, I'm, I'm not telling you that you're, you're going completely insolvent, but acts like this and what the, I'm going to read right now are a sign of some, some issues. Okay. And, uh, we've had issues like this before. And there have been pension funds that have had to be uh, bailed out. Um, and, but I will give you an example of airline pensions. In 2005, 2006, a handful of uh, airline operators, please put them down in the description below, guys, if you know, because I've actually ran into subscribers to this channel that lost all of their pensions. Um, I want to say it was Delta. I want to say Continental. Maybe United was involved. But, but throw it down there. Where they were insolvent. They said, sorry, we can't pay you. And it went to uh, court. And even judges decided. They said, uh, yeah, you're good. You don't have to pay them. And people lost everything. And that's why it's so important to prepare like you're not going to have a pension. Okay. That's why you want to go buy, uh, have good solid investments. That's why you want to go out and have rental properties that are bringing cash flow or cash flowing investments or a side business. Because if the worst thing happens. And quite frankly, I believe we're going to see a lot of pensions fail in this next crash because it's going to be such a big crash. All right. Cause we are at a hundred year cycle. Okay. Um, so that's why I think is very important. Put it in the comments below what pensions you guys have know of have gone uh, broke and then people can do start doing research for themselves. So it says right here, CalPERS blows out of 6 billion in PE investments at a 10% discount. It says the steady hands over at CalPERS 
who are attempting the world's worst carry trade with the state pensions money during a period of negative 6% real rates have decided to hit the bid with six billion worth of private equity stakes, selling them at a discount this year. Now, again, uh, CalPERS uh, puts out their their uh, numbers quarterly and then obviously annually where they put them all together. And so it's a little bit of a lagging bit of news. You can't figure out what they're doing. It's not in real time, right? Until they have to disclose these to their pension holders. It says the California Public Employees Retirement System sold the stakes to free up cash, according to a new Bloomberg article. Now, we've heard that a lot before, right? I've been talking about this. We are in a liquidity event that's been going on for about the past 90 days where people have really accelerated uh, 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 selling of equities and other assets um, to raise money because of that massive drop in all the indexes uh, like the Dow Jones, NASDAQ, and things like that, we're uh, hitting this bear market territory. And there's a lot of traders that are afraid. And what happens, it triggered off, uh, it, it hit a lot, and there was a lot of margin calls made. So it says right here, um, the fund is a 440, it is 440 billion. And as we have written about before, has gone through four different CIOs since 2009. That's also another very interesting point. So it says the pension fund sold the pension fund sold the stakes at a 10% discount to their value in the fall of 2021. The report says uh, the new CIO Nicole Masukio will be tasked with redeploying the capital into whatever investments the next chief is tasked with, blowing out a 10% loss. A little bit of sarcasm there. Uh, it says right here, and this is what she says: uh, the sale positions us to act on our new asset allocation and allows us to capitalize on market opportunities, she told Bloomberg. Okay, right. now this is something I wanna explain. I've talked about this before where uh, not only retail traders, but really uh, hedge funds and, and large institutional and traders, uh, the one reason that they sell, even if they're not getting a margin call, the reason they would sell into um, what looks to be into a bear market is they're liquidating, moving into cash because they are betting that the market's gonna go down farther and they're gonna try and scoop up assets at a lower price. And I guarantee you, if you have a CalPERS uh, pension fund, you are really hoping that they nail it, right? But we never know. And what could happen is the dead cat bounce and some uh, traders all of a sudden start hitting the buy order only to find it coming down even more, right? And that's the, that's the hard thing. And that's why you pay these people lots and lots of money that you actually don't see in your pension fund because they make money by trading, right? The problem is, is also, right now, that could actually, as funds like CalPERS or uh, hedge funds are doing this and are holding dollars, that can actually exacerbate the problem with the markets falling because you have a lot of people that are afraid, they're holding, hoping for lower prices, which means you don't have all the buyers in there to prop up the market. And that's where you turn to the plunge protection team. If you don't know what the plunge protection team is, go and Google it, it's really interesting. It's essentially the government has monetized uh, uh, collapses and they go out and they print a bunch of fake money and they buy stocks. But eventually they have to sell it into the market and that's the little tricky part and that could really make things uh, interesting like what we saw the Fed do in June where they said we're going to sell a bunch of these assets that are on our books and they could barely sell any because it was just making the crash that much worse. All right. Now, do I believe we've seen the end of this selling off? No, I do not, um, especially because the Fed is going to continue to raise rates, which is going to make uh, borrowing costs raise exponentially, and it's going to be harder and harder for the real economy to function with these higher rates, okay? So I want to bring you this story because I want you to realize how fragile pension funds are. And just because, one, you know, like um, we are using right now the biggest one in the country, CalPERS, as an example, just because it hasn't gone broke yet doesn't mean it can't go broke, okay? Um, fat fingers happen in both retail investors and uh, the big boys, all right? And if they do something wrong, you could be in a world of hurt. And if the government isn't around to bail them out, well, what can happen? And the problem is, if we're dealing with the largest one and it keeps cutting its benefits and people keep having less and less at the end of their retirement, there's only a certain point to where this, and essentially, it's a Ponzi scheme, right? It's a pyramid, right? Uh, it can go because the top are the ones that are paid the most and like CalPERS or any other pension fund that's failing slowly but surely, the people at the, the mass at the bottom, 
they're the ones that are holding the bag because they get less and less and have to pay more and more into their retirement. At a certain point, some people that are getting their retirement are going, is it worth it? I'd rather just take that money and deploy it myself because I care more about my money than some fund manager because all they care about is getting their fees. All right, guys, that being said, I hope you got something out of this. Again, not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a dude with a brohawk and a dream. All right, here we go. The Economic Ninja is out.